Hi, uh, so welcome back for the second lecture on proteins and their synthesis. So let's start with the definition of genetic code. Uh, the efforts to understand how proteins are encoded begin after uh, the structure of DNA was discovered by Jim Watson and Francis Crick. Uh, in 1953, George Gamow postulated that a three letter code must be employed to encode the 20 standard amino acids used by living cells to build proteins. So a genetic code can be defined as a set of correspondences between nucleotide triplets in RNA and amino acids in protein. In other words, it can also be defined as a set of rules by which information encoded in genetic material is translated into proteins. So here is a uh, general vision of our concept how uh, DNA encodes protein. So we can see that here is a DNA and inside DNA there is a part of DNA which is uh, which represents a gene and uh, we know that uh, this gene has two strands one of those strands acts as a DNA template strand uh, for the process of transcription and uh, here it is uh, the mRNA and uh, we can see that there are three triplet code words uh, that will later on uh, be used for translation and they will code for specific amino acids like here and a new protein will be formed. So this figure shows a difference between uh, an overlapping and a non-overlapping codon. The example shows a three-letter or a triplet code for non-overlapping here in this one. Uh, here for non-overlapping code, consecutive amino acids are specified by consecutive code words or codons. And for an overlapping code, this one, for an overlapping code, uh, consecutive amino acids are specified by codons that have uh, some consecutive bases in common. For example, the last two bases of this codon, these two last bases, codon may also be the first two bases of next codon. So overlapping codons, uh, are shown here. These are the overlapping codons. Thus, for the sequence uh, A, W, G, C, U, C, A, G, in a non overlapping code, the three triplets A, W, G, C, U, and C, A, G encode the first three amino acids respectively. However, in an overlapping code, the triplets A, W, W, G, and U, G, C encode the first three amino acids uh, if the overlap is two bases. So by 1961, it was already clear that the genetic code was non-overlapping. Analysis of mutationally altered proteins showed that only single amino acid changes at one time in one region of protein. So this result is uh, predicted by overlapping code, no, uh, non-overlapping code. So after understanding the concept of genetic code, one may question why there are only three nucleotides in the code. 
so why not one why not one or two or three or even uh, I, I mean or even four letters are there in a code so to answer this question let's see if rna molecule is read from one end to another only one of four different bases a u g or c can be found at each position thus if the words encoding amino acids were one letter long only four words only four words would be possible so this vocabulary cannot be the genetic code because we must have a word for each of 20 amino acids commonly found in cellular protein so uh, if the words were two letters long then four into four is equal to 16 and uh, 16 words would be possible for example a u uh, CU or CC. So this vocabulary is still not large enough. Uh, so if the words are, which is the third possibility, if the words are three letters long, then say, uh, four into four into four is equal to 64, uh, which is more than 20 possible amino acids. So these letters could be A, W, G, C, G, or U, G, C. So this vocabulary provides more than enough words to describe the amino acids. So we can conclude that code word must consist of at least three letter uh, nucleotides. However, if all words are triplets, then the possible words are in considerable excess of the 20 needed to name the common amino acids. This problem was solved by understanding the phenomenon of genetic code degeneracy. So what is the degeneracy of genetic code? So as already stated with four letters from which to choose at each position a three letter codon could make four into four into four or we can say 64 words. So with only 20 words needed for the 20 common amino acids, what are the other words used for? I mean, what is the use of other uh, words? So Creek's work suggested that the genetic code is degenerate, which means that each of uh, the 64 triplets must have some meaning within the code. Uh, for the code to be degenerate, some of the amino acids must be specified. Must uh, be specified by at least two or more different triplets. The reasoning goes like this. So if only 20 triplets were used, then the other 44 would be nonsense in that they would not encode any amino acid. So in that case, most frame shift mutations would be expected to produce nonsense words, uh, which uh, presume if we stop the protein building process and the suppression of frame shift mutations would rarely, if ever work. So Burnfield and Neidenberg proved that genetic code is degenerate, which means more than one codons code for single amino acid. So let's see which genetic code uh, codes for which amino acid. Here we can see uh, the genetic codes and respective, respective amino acids represented by three letter codes. So we can see that the number of codons for a single amino acid varies ranging from one codon uh, 
u double g let's see where it is so this is u double g is for tryptophan to as many as six codons or serine So let's discuss uh, the characteristics of uh, genetic code. So genetic code is written in linear form of ribonucleotide bases, I mean RNA, like uh, it is written here. And each word consists of three ribonucleotide letters, uh, which are triplet code, uh, which specifies one amino acid. The code is unambiguous, uh, means each triplet specifies only a single amino acid. Number four, uh, the code is degenerate. Uh, given amino acid can be specified by more than one triplet codon. Number five, the code is commonless. I mean, uh, once translation of mRNA begins, the codons are read from one after the other with no breaks between them until a stop signal is reached. Number six, the code contains one start and three stop codons. Uh, for example, UAG, uh, yes, this UAG uh, was the first stop codon uh, discovered it is called the amber codon amber is the english translation of the last name of uh, the person who discovered uh, codons uh, bernstein so mutants that are defective owing to the presence of abnormal amber codon are called amber mutation mutants two other stop codons are uga this one and uwa So UGA is also called opal codon and UAA is also called Osher codon. Okay, so here is the start codon and number seven. The code is non-overlapping, I mean, as we have discussed earlier, and the code is nearly universal uh, with only minor exceptions. A single coding dictionary is used by almost all viruses, prokaryotes, archaea, and eukaryotes. I mean, the same code is used by different organisms. Okay, so once genetic code was described, scientists began to wonder how the sequence of amino acids of a protein was determined uh, by the triplet codons of mRNA. So in 1958, uh, Crick mentioned, uh, it is therefore, I mean, this is his uh, statement, it is therefore a natural hypothesis that the amino acid is carried to the template by an adapter molecule and that the adapter is the part which actually fits on the RNA. So in its simplest form, this hypothesis would require 20 adapters, one for each amino acid. So today we know that uh, transfer RNA molecules are the adapters that translate the three nucleotide codon in the mRNA into corresponding amino acids, which is brought by uh, the transfer RNA to ribosome in the process of translation. The transfer RNAs are general components of translation machinery. A transfer RNA molecule can bring an amino acid to the ribosome for the purpose of translating any 
mRNA. The structure, so here is the, uh, the structure of a transfer RNA. Uh, the structure of transfer RNA holds the secret of specificity between an um, mRNA codon and the amino acid that it designates. The single standard R for RNA molecule has a clover leaf, this one, so it's kind of leaf, uh, clover leaf shape consisting of four double helical stems. I mean, this one, four double helical, these are double helical stems. And three single standard loops. These are three single standard loops. The middle loop of each transfer RNA is called the anticodon loop because it carries a nucleotide triplet called the anticodon. This sequence is complementary to the codon for amino acid carried by transfer RNA. The anticodon in the transfer RNA and the codon in the messenger RNA bind by specific RNA to RNA base pairing. Again, we see the principle of nucleic acid complementarity at work, uh, this time in the binding of two different RNAs. So because codon in mRNA are read in five prime to three prime, this one in five prime to three prime direction, anticodons are oriented and written in three prime to five prime direction as shown here. A transfer RNA normally exists as an L-shaped structure, this, this L-shaped structure, which is inverted. So rather than uh, the flattened clover leaf, which is shown here. So it is just a representation. In reality, the RNA exists like this. The three-dimensional structure of transfer RNA was determined with the use of X-ray x-ray crystallography. In the years since, this technique was used to deduce the double helical structure of DNA. It has been refined so that it can now be used to determine the structure of very complex macromolecules such as ribosomes. Okay, so the D loop, this one, contains the base dihydrouridine or UH2 for which the arm is named. I mean, due to this arm, it is called DHU loop. The D, D loop's main function is that of recognition. It is widely believed that it acts as a recognition site for amino acyl tRNA synthesis, synthase, synthase, I mean, sorry. So, our uh, Amino acyl tRNA synthetase is an enzyme uh, which is involved in the amino acylation of transfer RNA molecules. Here is the representation of how an amino acyl tRNA synthetase attaches an amino acid to its transfer RNA. So there are 20 of these enzymes in the cell, one for each of the amino acid. Each amino acid has a specific synthetase that links it only to those transfer RNAs that recognize the codons for that particular amino acid. To catalyze this reaction, uh, synthetases have two binding sites, this one and this one here. one for the amino acid and the other for uh, cognate transfer RNA. An amino acid is attached at the free three prime end of its transfer RNA here. The amino acid uh, alanine, for example, in this example is shown. The transfer RNA with an attached amino acid is said to be charged. I mean, when an amino acid is attached with the transfer RNA, uh, 
this uh, our transfer RNA is called charged transfer RNA. All the transfer RNAs differ in their primary nucleotide sequence. All transfer RNAs fold into virtually the same L-shaped conformation, except for differences in the anticodon, this one, anticodon loop, and amino acyl end here. This similarity of structure can be easily seen uh, in, in different RNAs, uh, which show, so for example, in this figure, shows two different transfer RNAs superimposed when folded into their correct three dimensional structure, uh, yeast transfer RNA for glutamine, which is in blue color, almost completely overlaps the yeast transfer RNA for phenylalanine, which is in red color except for the anticodon loop and amino acyl N. So conservation of structure tells us that shape is important for transfer RNA function. So what would happen if the wrong amino acid were covalently attached to a transfer RNA? I mean, this is a question. So a convincing experiment uh, answered this question. The experiment used cystinyl transfer RNA, or, uh, which is the transfer RNA specific for cysteine. So this transfer RNA was charged with cysteine, meaning that the cysteine was attached to the transfer RNA. The charged transfer RNA was treated with the nickel hydride and uh, which converted the cysteine while still bound to uh, transfer RNA into another amino acid, alanine, without affecting the transfer RNA. So now this transfer RNA was originally for cysteine, but now it has an attached alanine uh, amino acid. So protein synthesized with this hybrid species had alanine wherever we would expect cysteine. Uh, the experiment demonstrated that the amino acids are illiterate. I mean, they do not know. They are inserted at the proper position uh, because the transfer RNA adapters recognize the messenger RNA codons and insert their attached amino acids appropriately. Thus, the attachment of correct amino acid to its cognate transfer RNA is a critical step in ensuring that a protein is synthesized correctly. If the wrong amino acid is attached, there is no way to prevent it from binding, uh, from being incorporated into growing protein chain. So, Keeping in mind uh, these points, we can uh, rediscuss or revisit uh, the concept of degeneracy. So, according to this concept, most amino acids uh, can be brought to ribosome by several alternative transfer RNA types. Each type has a different anticodon that base pairs with a different codon in the messenger RNA. And certain charged transfer RNA species can bring their specific amino acids to any one of the several codons. These transfer RNAs recognize and bind to several alternative codons, not just the one with a complementary sequence. Through a loose kind of base pairing at the three prime end of uh, the codon and the phi prime end of the anticodon. This loose pairing is called wobble. What is wobble? Wobble is actually uh, a situation in which the third nucleotide, in which the third nucleotide, uh, this one, 
here is the third nucleotide, uh, in which the third nucleotide of an anticodon at the five prime end, this is anticodon and this is third nucleotide at five prime end, can form either of two alignments. Uh, this third nucleotide can form hydrogen bonds with hydrogen bonds with either its normal complementing nucleotide in the third position of the codon or with a different nucleotide in that position. As shown in this figure, in the third site at five prime end, the anticodon G can take either of the two verbal positions, thus being able to pair with either U here, uh, the uracil or the, the C. So this ability means that a single transfer RNA species carrying an amino acid, uh, in this case a serine, can recognize two codons, UCU and UCC in the messenger RNA. So verbal rules dictate which nucleotides can and cannot form hydrogen bonds with alternative nucleotides through verbal. For example, in this table, the letter I uh, stands for inosine, uh, which is one of the rare bases found in the transfer RNA, often in the uh, anticodon. So G in the anticodon can pair with C or U. And similarly, there are other possibilities where C uh, in the anticodon can pair with G only and U can pair with A or G and I can pair with U, C or A. So I think uh, this is enough uh, for today's lecture. Um, if you have some questions, you can ask me and uh, from next uh, lecture, we shall start from uh, ribosomes. Thank you.